Welcome back to God, Coffee, and Resilience with your host, I am Reese, and today we have a very, very lovely and unique guest with us. Her name is Miss Kelly Tan. Hi, Kelly. Hi, everyone. <laughs> yes, I'm so excited that she's with us today. Oh, my goodness. If they knew what we had to go through to be able to get this going. Um, my love is in Australia. Um and we'll get into that. But what time is it over there, Kelly? Well, it's 11 11. What timing it is? It's 11 11 now in Melbourne, Australia. Wow. And it's 6 11 here p.m. in Texas. So, uh, as you guys can tell, different time zones, but I'm super excited. She is um, one of the very first people that I have talked to in this big of a time zone, and I'm just happy and, and grateful to have her on here. So thank you for taking time out of your morning to be with us. Oh, I'm excited to be here. I'm so happy. Thank you for having me. Yes. Of course, of course. When I saw her email and I heard her story, I was like, without a doubt, yes, let's have her on here. Girl power, but also entrepreneurship. And we will definitely get into that. But um, she is definitely a superwoman, a kick butt lady. And I'm excited to have her here sharing her story. Um, but Kelly, we do this little thing where it's kind of like an icebreaker. And I always like to ask everybody, what is their favorite caffeinated beverage? Oh, gosh, I, I've actually actually quit <laughs> having coffee um, a year and a half ago, after attending uh -oh. Tony Robbins um, live event. And so I used uh -huh. to have a lot of coffee. So now I can't think about any caffeinated ones unless maybe the occasional green tea. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I like green tea. Yeah. I like Lipton, Lipton green tea. Um, yeah. The peach kind. I like the peach kind. Yeah. So that's no more caff no more caffeinated drinks for me. No yeah. more caffeine. Oh, Lord. No. So is there something bad we should all know about caffeine? No, it's um, it was just more of, you know, going for me because I had way too much coffee and I sort of depended on it. So it was not so great for me in terms of my health. But I mean, okay. it's okay to have, you know, one or two. But for me, I would either have all or nothing. So I was having five okay. cups of coffee a day and really was yes. relying on that for so much energy because, you know, being a single mom, a single parent, mm -hmm. it's just, you know, we need all the energy we can get. And it came to a point where, you know, I was attending um, Tony Robbins and he was saying something about, you know, too much caffeine and too much, you know, coffee, it's not good for the body. And so I've decided right. that, okay, I should just, you know, eliminate that from my daily intake. It's, it's not bad. It's just my preference. And I've decided to go with that. I support you 100% love. <laughs> Caffeine is like one of the number one uh, drugs in America. People don't really look at caffeine as a drug, but it is. You can get dependent on caffeine. So I understand what you're coming from. Yeah. Some days, I mean, I can find myself getting two cups and I'm like, no, I know I don't drink, you know, coffee in the afternoon, but sometimes I need to pick me up because we're so yeah. busy at work. So yeah, totally understand. No judgment here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the second question is, um, what are three things that people don't know about you or wouldn't expect that from you, like wouldn't expect certain things from you? Well, the first one would be, if I'm talking to anybody right now, they would not know that I've been in the beauty industry for the past 10 years. Um, so I am a certified manicurist and a waxing therapist. And so that was what I did in my previous business, um, you know, just giving women the confidence and just beautifying the nails. And the best part of it is people find this weird, but I enjoy removing hair because it gives people confidence. Yes. yes so I can that's, see that. Yeah. So that's one. Second one is that people, when they meet me, they think that I'm an extrovert, but really I'm an introvert. 
And so it's, yeah, it's just really getting out of my comfort zone. So people don't know about that because when people see me, they're like, oh, you don't, you don't look like it. You don't sound like it. But really, I am that, you know, the person who likes to just be at home and you keep to myself and yeah. things like that. Yeah. And the third one is that, ooh, I have to really think hard about that. <laughs> that I actually like um, crystals and stuff. So I like to, you know, have crystals with me. So people don't know that about me because I don't talk much about it. It sounds a little bit on the woo side sometimes. So yeah, so that will be that, crystals. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, so I kind of, well, I don't know for 100%, but those are three interesting facts. I like what you said about the hair removal. People think I'm weird because I like to like extract things, but I yeah. think that comes from like my medical background. Like I had to do a lot of boil popping, pimple popping. Oh, um, people yes. come to the ER. Yeah. And they have these big old boils and they like, it hurts so bad. And so, yeah. And so I enjoy doing that, but people think it's disgusting and weird. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I actually like doing that as well because it comes hand in hand with, you know, when it comes to removing hair on the body or even say on the private area. So I was specialized, right. um, you know, as one of the best Brazilian waxing therapists in Malaysia. That was where mm -hmm. my salon is. It was an award winning salon. And so what comes when, you know, when we do hair removal, we have pimples, boils, anywhere on the body, even on a private yeah. area. And so that's where the part comes in where it's really oddly satisfying is to press them out, like blackheads yes. and all that. So people find it disgusting, but I'm like, oh my God, it's so satisfying. <laughs> it is. You're like yeah. cleaning it up for the person. And yeah. there you go. At the end, it's all clean. I like yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, my love, I know that you have mentioned like um, your story a little bit, but why don't you just kind of dive into that a little bit and start where like um, where your love for beauty and, and how you got how you got into that industry, what year it was and kind of the things that you did in that past life. Okay, so it all started at a really young age. And I have to thank my mom for that because when I was young, she didn't want me to bum around. So that was about at the age of 16 years, uh, 16 years old. I was just, you know, a typical teenager who likes to bum around. And she was like, no, nah, you can't do that. You know, you've got to go do something, make use of the time. And, you know, so I said, all right, why don't I just take up a course on learning how to paint nails and be a manicurist. And so I went for that. Um, I, it wasn't really a school. It was actually the place that where I used to get my nails done. And so I asked the, the owner of the salon and said, you know, do you have, do you teach people how to do nails? And she was like, yeah, we do that. And so that's when I said, okay, let's go for it. And so I was there hanging out, doing, um, it wasn't really much of a structured course. She was teaching me based on what she's learned and her experience and stuff like that. And so that's where I realized that I had a passion in beautifying people's nails. And so from yeah. that, it took off. And, but of course, you know, at such a young age, my parents were saying that they come, you know, I'm from an Asian background and my parents are very big on education. And so they said to me, you need to carry on with your college and your tertiary education before you can really dive deep into the beauty industry. And so that's what I did. And so when I was in, I was actually in Melbourne, Australia, doing my college and my university. And that's where I enrolled myself in beauty school again, just so that I can really, you know, get a structured course because it was an actual beauty school. And so I did right. that together with my um, university education. So that was tough because I was juggling two different things. And, you know, I also wanted to be a student in Melbourne, Australia. I get to, you know, go out, have fun with friends. So I had to juggle three things. And that's how it all began. And when I graduated, I told my parents, I said, I really want to start um, having my own beauty salon. And so they supported me in terms of, you know, having helped me with the capital to start the beauty salon. And from there, you know, I started from ground zero, scratch with all of the marketing, starting a business, 
I had to learn from the University of Hard Knocks because I did not really go out and work for people. Um, the only mm-hmm. time that I did have work experience was when I did part time in Australia just to you know have some experience. But you know having a business back home was completely different. And so I really just learned from all of the experience and all of the mistakes. And from then on, it became a well-known, award-winning beauty salon. Yes, I love yeah. that. I love when you said, mom said you cannot bum around. I think all yeah. parents, I don't know why moms are seem to be harder on girls, um, but they are. And I know mom, my mom, she was like, listen, it's either you go get a job, you go to school yeah. or you go to the military. You got to pick one. You can't sit around here when you're done with school. And so my mom gave me kind of the same speech and she was like, this yeah. is it. You better pick one. <laughs> I'm like, okay, (laughs) let me figure out what it is I want to do before it's too late. Um, So I would definitely say, um, when did the pressure come? Like, when did the the stuff hit the fan, so to speak, rock bottom? Like, you had this award-winning salon and you were doing great things and you had a passion for doing nails and beautifying women, but... Like, when did things get really hard and kind of take like a pivotal turn for you? Well, there were there were two pivotal turns. One was um, when I had that award winning salon, I wasn't happy. You know, it was great. Um, I had everything, you know, the, the money, the cash flow, everything that I would say everybody have always wanted. Right. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I had I had help. I had a nanny to look after my kid. You know, I was, you know, going on holidays, nice big vacations without having to think twice about, you know, do I have enough money to spend? I had everything. But the one thing that I didn't have was time. And it was mm-hmm. it was just sad because when I had my little boy, I didn't have time for him. I missed his milestones because, you know, and the nanny was the one who was experiencing all of his milestones while I was at work. And that was the time where I was, I was thinking, OK, this is this is not this is not what I want. You know, I have everything, but I don't get to experience life, you know, as a mom um, or even as a woman itself. You know, I didn't have time to do any self-pampering. I didn't have any any time for myself or the family. And so that's when I decided it was time to just let go because all that can be built again. And so I yes. sold the salon without any backup plan because, you know, I put it out on offer. It was there for a while. And all of a sudden, when I was, you know, on a holiday and just so happened I was in Australia again, because, you know, I've, I've always loved Australia. And I was on yeah. holiday and I got a call from my broker and he's like, you've got an offer. Do you want it? And I'm like, yes. I said yes straight away. And before I knew that, I was, you know, back home, signing all the papers, getting everything ready. And I sold it. You know, it was a huge relief in a way that, you know, now mm-hmm. I can go and pursue you know, what I want to do, which is, you know, to have more time. I wanted something that have, you know, a flexibility in time so that mm-hmm. I can spend it with family. So that was one. Yes. And then while I was easing into, you know, trying to figure out what I want to do with the next step, that's when I had issues with my marriage. Just a few months later, everything just broke down. It wasn't because of me being in the business. It was something else, which I would love to share when things are, you know, in the future when I can share it. Right now, I can't share as much because, you know, we're still in the the midst of it. But um, yeah, everything just broke down. And that was the second pivotal turn in my life that I had to really look hard as to, you know, how can I really pull myself up? You know, at the same time, I still needed an income because I had a child that, you know, I would want to have him with me all the time and be able to take care of him fully, 100% in terms of time, financial and emotional, just being there. And so I just really had to pull myself up. Right. Now, who was your support system during that time? Because I know it's like very, very vital to have people in your corner, even if it's just like a best friend or family to kind of lift you up and be there for you to listen to you vent because sometimes we need to vent and just get out frustration and sometimes we just need somebody to listen to us or just cry and not say anything just sit there like who's who was in your corner while you were going through all this and who did you kind of consult with so I had three people in my corner so that would be my mom my dad and a really good friend 
So my best friend, yep. So I had three people that, you know, I talked to them about different things, you know, like, you know, what do I do in life right now? What's the direction that I'm going? Like, why is this happening? So yeah, they have been there and they are still there even at this point. Yes. And kind of like when, uh, do you meditate or do anything? Like what is, what is your faith? Um, well, I started journaling, writing everything yes. down on a book, all of my feelings, because sometimes there's stuff that you still can't tell people or you just can't tell anyone. So I put everything onto a journal and that's how I, you know, was able to really put, hold myself together. And also I started um, exercising. So I've lost about 10 kilograms since then. <laughs> So I did a lot of exercising. I got into a fitness thing. So it was, you know, every day I was just exercising. I was moving my body. I was listening to music and right. and just talking to people. That helps because at the very beginning, you know, especially in an Asian culture, I would say for us, it's really hard to say that my marriage is not working, you know, or it didn't work or it's no longer working. Mm-hmm. It's It's done. It's very hard to accept that and it's very hard to talk about it openly because it's, it looks like a failure, right? Coming from a, a background where, you know, Kelly has it all. She's done this. You know, she's got that salon. She's doing so well. And, you know, of course, I didn't want to be that person to say, you know, but my marriage didn't work. It didn't work out. And so that was that. And so I didn't talk to anyone for a bit. I was only talking to, you know, my mom, um, my, my dad, you know, men. He's a very, he's a man yeah. of very few words, you know. He'd be like, <laughs> "If this is not working, you got to stand up and move on." I'm like, "It's not that easy, <laughs> you know. You can't just say stand up and move on, and I'm going to move on." I said, "I can't, you know. It's, I've got to process my feelings and stuff like that." So my mom has been there, and then you know, a few months later, then I slowly open up to my my good friend, and that's where you know it really helps because you know she's been there, and she really understood right. what was happening. Yeah, and it definitely, definitely does help to talk to someone who's been in your shoes because it sounds like even though people mean well, but yeah. when they aren't in your shoes, they try to give you advice and it seems kind of cliche or it seems just kind of very superficial because they really don't know yeah. what to say, but they just want to be there to support you. And so you yeah. accept it, but you're kind of like, I need something more. I need, <laughs> yes, I need something that's right. more. <laughs> yeah. Everything's yeah. going to be okay. Well, yeah, but it don't feel like it. So I, I just, I need something more. I yeah. know for me, like when I found myself in those dark places, I'll pray. But then I also, like I started going to therapy and I started talking to someone too. And at first I was kind of like, I don't know. Cause in the black community, it's kind of like the African-American community, mental health and talking to people and talking about feelings is all taboo. You just need to collect yourself and get over it. it it'll yeah. be okay. Like we've all been through hard things. It'd be fine. Just move on. But I was just like, that's not working. I had that attitude for a while with the things I went through and it just didn't, it it didn't serve me. It just didn't help for me to have that mindset. So once I started talking to people and actually getting another opinion, but a professional opinion, um, I was able to kind of move some things around, change my thoughts and my perspective and kind of get through it. So I agree with you on that wholeheartedly. (laughs) Yes, definitely. (laughs) So you said that you had no backup plan, but you knew what you wanted. So kind of how did you find your love kind of for entrepreneurship? Like, how did you get involved in what you're doing now? So I sat down for a while and was just figuring things out. You know, I was looking at all, you know, browsing through, you know, Google is always anybody's best friend now. Just have a look and to see what's available out there. And from then on, I knew, okay, the only thing that can can give me flexibility and freedom uh, in time for, you know, in business and in life is to have an online business. And so I sat down as well thinking, what are my strengths? What is it that I can do to help people from an online perspective. And so because I was doing all of the marketing for the beauty salon, I figured, okay, social media it is. And that's where I started. I started part, I would say part time, as in, you know, it was more of like something that I wanted to try out, see if that works for Uh me. And so 
I did social media management. So I went on to, you know, third party platforms and try to get, you know, clients and stuff like that. And I did. I built a massive portfolio within a few months. And that's from where, you know, I felt that, okay, this is, this is great. You know, this online business is giving me, you know, flexibility in freedom and in time. But then, you know, I had to still pivot because I am constantly, you know, trying to get clients, you know, I do get long-term clients, but there are a fair few that's, you know, always going to be short-term because, you know, social media, as it seems these days, it looks like, you know, I feel that, you know, I am the fairy godmother that waves the wand right now to give, you know, leads and sales and stuff like that. But it's more, it's more than that. You know, it's, it's more than just posting one post before you can get your sales or before you can get recognized or before anything happens. But of course, it's not seen in, you know, it's not seen because people are seeing stories like, you know, oh, how I went from zero clients to a million, uh, you know, zero dollars to a million uh, dollars in one year. That's what people are reading these days. And so people don't understand that, you know, it's, you know, social media is not, you don't get an instant result. It takes time. And so I, for me, that was the pivotal point that I had to do something for my own. And that's when I've decided that, okay, now that, you know, I've done social media, which is the one that, I, that really lights me up, you know, that I can really, you know, give the results. And that's when I decided, okay, it's going to be Instagram because, you know, I've helped clients with Instagram. And so this is where I've decided that, okay, I'm going to, you know, start going out on my own. You know, I still do have my, you know, few clients that I've worked with long term. And, you know, I'm that sort of person who looks at the long term relationship. So, you know, I have, you know, a steady clientele. And as well as, you know, moving on, I would want to be, you know, I want to get clients where, you know, I do one on one coaching when it comes to Instagram. And also I'm creating a, a an Instagram course coming soon, more specifically Instagram okay. Reels. Okay, yeah. I like that because I know Reels are fairly new. A lot of people, um, they kind of look at them as TikToks. Yes. Um, but, and, and a lot of people reuse their TikToks on Instagram, but I like them. I like TikTok, but I also like Instagram Reels because sometimes I, you can't see everything on TikTok. So I like reels. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 really fun, but I do understand that it's you know it's it's something where because I've gone on like you know coaching calls where people's like, I what do I post? Where do I go? What do I do next? And stuff like that. So, okay, so this is where I've decided that I'm going to help coaches and service based business owners with Instagram reels. How to really get started? What sort of content to post? in order to be seen and to get more leads. So this is where I am yeah. right now after going through that whole entire place where, you know, I had to really just rise up from the dark. Yeah, I'm wondering, like, did did you use anything? Did you do any classes or did, like, YouTube? Because I know YouTube is, like, the holy grail of everything. You can't trust everything you see on YouTube, but there are some good content creators that help people try to understand things. They try. And then I know a lot of people do courses and other things like that. Or did you, was it just, like, a lot of your own research or... Yes, it was a lot of my own research because Instagram Reels is still fairly new. They've only just been around for one year. And so, you know, it was a lot of trial and error trying to understand what is it with Instagram Reels. But really with Instagram Reels, it's it's another way of video marketing. So video marketing has been around for a long time. So it's just implementing what, you know, Instagram really wants us to do because they do have their certain algorithm and they have they have already mentioned as to, you know, what sort of things they're looking out for and what they want is people to be on their platform to be able to, you know, for them to stay as long on the platform. So your content, of course, has to be engaging in order for your or for the audiences to be there. And so, yes, I have done a lot of my own research and just, you know, f- trying out different things and see what works. And the one that works stays and it became my framework. Yay! I love it. I yeah. love it when I meet um other successful 
entrepreneurial women out here making a name for themselves and helping other people, but also like they are creating their own lane. So there's a lot of people out here that are social media coaches or social media managers or whatever they like to call themselves. But a lot of people copy from other people or either they have no credentials or anything else. They just know they just going to hop on social media, make their own little page and put in their bio, there's a social media coach. And then there's really like no real results. But you are out here doing your own research, working hard at it. This is your job. And this is what you did as your backup plan to help you live the life that you want. But you also take it seriously. And I can tell like you enjoy doing it. It sounds like you enjoy doing it, but you also... Yeah, like you take your clients seriously. And that's what I that's what I like. If I was working with someone, that's what I would want to see from them. Not only their portfolio and results, but that they actually care about what I need help with and that they're actually trying to help me and it's not just like a paycheck. So I I am very happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it really comes that. yeah, it really comes from a passion, especially what I've um been through as, you know, a person now who is you know, being separated and things like that. It's made me realize mm-hmm. that I really just want to help women because I've, I've, I've met women who are just so stuck in, you know, yeah. a, a marriage where because they're so worried that they don't have the financial freedom to support their mm-hmm. kids and they're just stuck. And when, if they're not stuck, then they're out on their own, not knowing how can they really support their kids. And that's where, you know, I really have the passion to want to help women to not only just, you know, single parents or just, you know, just women in general, because I want to see women who are empowered and not scared to move out of their comfort zone, you know, not stay stuck. Because I have been, I've thought this for a very long time. If I had not made the decision to pull myself up from the very dark times, or if I had been leaning on you know, my other half and not having any sort of independence financially, I would have lost everything. I wouldn't have been able to move to Australia and be able to provide for my kid. I wouldn't be able to walk him to school every morning. I wouldn't be able to spend time with him. So that's when I realized that, you know, I'm here for a purpose and that's to help women to just gain their independence because I don't want them to be in a situation where they can't do anything. Right. And they feel like that's the end of the road for them. Yes, I yeah. love that. You found your purpose in all of it, your purpose yeah. and your passion. Still thinking, you know, beauty might still be in there, but you are on a different road. And yeah. I love it. I love it. I can just see the growth. <laughs> yes. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. I just, you know, it's for me, it's just reframing the mind. I'm still helping women, like from right from the get go. Yes. When I started my beauty salon, I've always been helping women. And the thing that I've been giving them is confidence and nothing has changed. Yes. It's just the, um, the mode of giving the confidence is different. Uh-huh. It used to be it's different. Yeah, it used to be beautifying the nails and removing the hair. Right now, it's giving them the confidence on how to really use, you know, a social media platform to start their business. Right. So it's, it's yes. just different forms. And I love it because, you know, since COVID came and the pandemic, everything has moved to online. But yes. we've had like the the period or the era of entrepreneurship just rise and more and more people were just like, hey, I'm working from home. Why can't I just work from home permanently? Quit my job, you know, start selling and just become empowered. I love that. I definitely do love that. Well, what advice would you give um, any woman that's out there listening or maybe even a man that's out there listening and they're just kind of like straddling the fence and they're like, I don't know, am I crazy for quitting my job? Am I crazy for this? Am I crazy about thinking about going for, you know, my entrepreneurship dream or opening that shop or starting that online um, course or like what advice would you give someone that's kind of like similar in the same place as, as you or where you were? and they're kind of scared to take that next step? I would say don't think twice and don't listen to anyone. Just remove any negative factor that's stopping you and holding you back from releasing and unleashing yourself to really achieve the greatness that it's already in them. So don't think twice. That's for me. 
Because when you start to listen to so many things around you, you're never going to take that leap. Because if someone who hasn't been in that path on, on that journey and is questioning you, are you sure you want to take that, that journey? Of course, you're going to you know, think twice and not do it. But has that person gone on that journey to really say that? And so for me, it's just to remove all of that. Because I, when, I, um, when I wanted to go into my freelance sort of social media management, you know, mm-hmm. I had you know, my other half who was, you know, it, it happens, you know, when you don't have another, you know, the other significant person in your life who's not supporting you. In fact, he questioned like me and say, are you sure you want to do this? I don't think it's going to work out. You're not going to be successful doing this. Are you sure you want to take the leap? But for me, you know, even when my other half said then, that other half said, I said, no, nah. I know that I have potential in me and I just went for it. And so, yes, yes, don't think twice. Yes, don't think twice. Don't listen to the haters. (laughs) Don't listen to the negativity. Yeah. Um, Just go with your gut. I love that. Well, where can my audience find you, love? Like, where can they connect with you if they want services? How can they find you, get in touch with you? Well, they can find me. I hang out on Instagram all the time. So they can find me on Instagram at Kelly Talks Social. Or they can head to my website if they like to have more information at kellytalkssocial.com. Yes, guys, please go follow her, support my girl, and also be on the lookout for her new Instagram course on Reels that should be coming out soon. I'm super excited for her and 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 just for the future and the life and everything, just all the things. She is phenomenal. Um, and I just hope to have as much confidence and courage as she has one day. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I always tell people and my guests that you guys inspire me. You know, I put, I give you the platform. I mean, this is very selfless. I come on here. I don't really care how I look or anything like this. It's just more of the message I want people to get. And I want them to leave here feeling empowered and inspired and you always end up inspiring and empowering me. And I just love it. I always leave off of these interviews feeling like um, new money. I don't know. I just feel wonderful. So thank you for sharing your story and inspiring me tonight too. It's a pleasure being here and to be able to share my story and just, you know, for people to hear and, you know, be able to take empowered action. Yes, yes, you guys. I will have all of her information in the show notes where to follow her in case you're driving or you're at work listening to this episode. But I also want to thank you for tuning in and listening to this episode. And as always, please stay safe and I will see you in another week. Bye, guys. Bye.